we're going to go over what 321 fixes and why you should upgrade to it. Is it worth it? I do greatly believe so, and here's why. Hey guys, it's Chris, and today's date is... I don't know, what the hell is today's date? The 22nd of December, 2021. Is this going to come out on time? I don't know. What are we doing? Um, Amiga OS 3.2.1 just came out. And instead of using some crazy contraption or whatever, this is an OS 3.2, uh, Amiga 3000, uh, 68040. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use SMB Mounter. I've already downloaded it from my account on Hyperion. You can use your digital... Uh, key that is on your CD, which is mine on the other side. I'm not going to show you my key. You know what helps? Hang on. Let's check something. Helps if I plug in my network card. My fat foot always knocks the cable out from underneath, so we're just going to be lazy and I'm not going through the roadie initialization. We're just going to reboot it. Now, with the network plugged in, I'm going to use SMB mounter. Adjust myself in my chair 82 times. Make this so you can kind of see it. I don't know if this monitor is going to flicker. This is a 14 inch monitor. So bear with me. We're going to go to my Amiga share. So here's the 3.2.1 update. We're just going to un LHA that sucker. All the modules, this holy bar mitzvah. So you do have some new ROMs. Now these ROMs, are they required for you to run on your Amiga? No, they're not. You can write yourself an EEPROM. I'm going to do it. Why not? This addresses some people having issues when you turn your Amiga on with a 3.2 ROM and it's just a black screen. It's actually working, but you're never going to see the boing ball. I think this fixes that. So we can do the 4,000, we can do the 2, we can do the this one, even the 1,000 we can kick softly with a 3.2.1. Right now it's rocking 3.14 because I like that one better. It just seems to work. 3.2's been having issues for a lot of people and I went through multiple instances of this and the other devices could you use this on another machine that starts with a rasp and ends with a pie? probably now I am going to remove all of the 746.3 locale discs because there's only one I need the one that Jesus spoke uh, locale 3.2 EN for America. And we could use Mounter, or you could even use Go ADF and mount these discs and do the install that way. Or you can copy them to your GoTech. You want to use Go ADF? You can use Mounter or any of your own choices to do so. Uh, Go ADF. Go ADF. I registered this. This is an older version, but if you are looking to support this, bitplan.pl slash goadf. It's like seven million Polsky dollars, but that's like seven quid, if that. So go ahead and give uh, some support to there. We're going to choose the directory where I dumped this. Dump. Oops, that's 2.1. Heh. 321 updates, ADFs. We're going to load just the update disk. So we say update 321, we're going to mount it in AD0. And we're just going to run that and see what happens. Why? Why not? Drag this out of the way. And let's just go for it. Flash floppy manager is me. I was going to add the whole spiel to the uh, Inglesia. So here we go. I'm going to zoom on in this tiny little monitor keep my big melon head out of the way. So this program updates the hard drive installations of Amiga OS 3.2 to release 3.2.1. We're just going to say intermediate because I don't trust novice. Proceed into system. Sounds good. English like Jesus spoke. I'm going to screw up my startup sequence. Alright, for now. This is all digital, so it will run faster since it's a virtual disk drive, basically, with Go ADF, and I can flip-flop other drives as needed. 
Please insert the classes disk into any drive. So we're going to slide this out of the way. And we're going to say classes. We're going to unmount this one. And we're going to put classes AD0. I could mount others. You can see the installation is continuing on the bottom here. We'll see what disk it asks for next. To enable installation, please reboot your Amiga, remove the floppy disks, and press proceed. So we'll just say unmount, unmount, quit, go ADF, and proceed. Now it's probably going to blow up. So let's take a peek and see what the hard drive does. This is going to blow out my startup sequence because it did some magic. I'll have to go through and compare what is what. Hopefully it's not a lot of crazy crap. But we'll see what happens. It just re-kicked. Now the reason you're going to use a modules disk is if you don't have a 3.2.1 ROM. This has 3.2 ROMs in her. We're booting. Hard drive light is hard driving. So I guess it's not one floppy. There we go. 2021, my period entertainment, OS 3.2, about is 47.7, release 3.2.1 on a 3.2 ROM that I am sorry. Every video, I say you can't see any of that. My apologies. So I just did uh, the about help. So I just went up here, said about, which is right on me a question mark. And uh, 3.2 ROM, as you can see, release 3.2.1. 47.7 and workbench 47.3. Now I'm not running glow icons, so you can tell we got this replaced and this replaced, and default icons was replaced. I added Vinced Shell. Reaction was replaced because I had magic workbench icons for these, so I could see what was replaced. So the workbench preferences um, were replaced. Here is your standard menus. There we go. Oh, it's 3.2.1. So anyway, that was a flawless upgrade for me. I'm going to uh, get busy on the other ones just to see what I blow up. If I have any issues or have anything weird, I'll report the findings. And I'm, you know, I might even try it on on uh, something else. I, I don't know which one I'm going to try, but you know, we'll see if it works for me. I have about 18 purchased copies of this thing. For all the different Amigas, I guess I could have bought it once, but I like to support the people. So that's the 3,000 done. Now moving on to the 4,000. Now I'm not doing the ROMs. The 4,000 is going to be unique because I have the GVP Spectrum 2824 uh, dual mode graphics card with the pass-through not hooked up at the moment. When I want to run the pass-through, I've got to shoot a cable all the way over to the Dell unless I want to take this monitor cable and yep. So I don't usually do that. Uh, Vampire, not going to re-kick that one quite yet. Because she's unique in her own way. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over what 321 fixes and why you should upgrade to it. Is it worth it? I do greatly believe so. And here's why. So the summary of the change log is text edit now uh, provides an AREX port. The CE valve program adds support for the dollar sign notation and hex switching. Uh, CD file system has a resident tag again. When invoked in system startup, it adds a file system resource for itself. Show configs GUI has been extended to show more memory expansion libraries, devices, resources, residents, and drives. The icon edit got a huge interface makeover. That's why it was in my prefs looking differently. Um, the list browser gadget now includes sorting by column. Workbench has a new menu item that allows the users to eject disk drives, including the virtual ADF mounts. Very important, and that's cool. It'll work for ADF, CD, DVD drives also. Workbench also got a Workbench Gauge Class gadget to fill the gauge for a volume thingy and falls back to the internal, like, look if it's not found. Workbench Info can now display the Workbench icon information without the requester from a shell or script without requiring the user to select Info. Interesting. So the general fixes were locale library, uh, got a bug fixed, 
uh, text edit got bug fixes. The execute command for your C directory is back um, because that was removed in 3.2. Clipboard device got fixed. It had a bug from 314 that prevented copying and pasting above 16 kilobytes. IPrefs, now I and I mentioned this one a long time ago when I was doing my upgrades. IPrefs and Nick Prefs didn't get along. IPrefs, uh, when the workbench screen could not be closed or reopened because it had a lock and the open window or no requester would pop up. The intuition is attempting a request annoying thing. Uh, wouldn't get out of the way. Now it's... Uh, fixed a window with no a null or empty title string is now named no title rather than blank line the system find libraries and classes are fixed to ask for a minimum rather than a blanket version 47 icon library no longer has issues with the eastern program i don't know what that is workbench library uh got fixed this is in the rom also in your modules disk uh, icon and workbench library are usually burned to the ROM. You can also run them off your, your modules disk, which is good if you don't want to burn another ROM. Um, it has its Windows and drawer management routines updated. There's also lots of fixes for like the help. CPU documentation was expanded. They uh, redid the HD toolbox documentation. Reaction got a bunch of fixes for its gadgets and buttons. The ROM components were fixed. Um, so either do the new ROM or your modules disk when you install this. Uh, graphics library had a wrong calculation to, in this display database. Um, blah, 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 blah. This would end up trashing 8 bytes of memory, causing fatal consequences. The ROM shipped with 3.2 would not display the boot animation if your machine had a hard drive or a disk drive disconnected. If there was no hard drive, no disk drive, it would just have a blank screen. The new ROM burn, if you do choose to burn this, will display a red blinking screen if there is no hard drive or no floppy drive hooked up. I like the traditional, you know, if no boot device is detected, the screen will now turn red and the disk image will blink. Interesting, I'd like to try that one out in the future. If you, connect, if you have a boot drive, it'll display the normal disk load. RAM handler has been improved, so the link made from Envark to Env works more like it did before 3.1.2, like 3.1.4 did. It still copies on read, but now the files are deleted from Env and will not copy them over again on the next reboot. DOS library had a boo-boo that was fixed when performing nil redirections. Uh, workaround for the RAM handler has been removed, and RAM handler has been improved. Doesn't mean it's going to not crash. Shell had several changes for the tab to complete function. I used Vince Shell, but now all these features are being included. Set patch had a no drive level patch that got removed and it's back to the behavior that it had. Uh, if you had an optical drive, it caused the ID act, IDE activity light to be constantly on or a, or a SCSI to SD or a compact flash to IDE or otherwise the light was always on. That is fixed with the drive LED patch. Uh, you can enable this. The IDE activity led to be patched permanently on. You can enable this patch with the argument drive LED patch. You can call that in your startup. Uh, the reason for the change to not load this patch by default, it only affects the IDE activity LED of certain machines. So we didn't want to they didn't want to put it on everything. It causes a three-second delay. So keep that in mind. Uh, it also says there are lots of other cosmetic and small fixes. You can get all this from your general overview inside. So I'm going to continue with the 4000 update now, and we'll see what blows up on that. Quit go ADF, and we're going to say proceed. This is going to reboot. Now, since it's my 4000, I have to reboot it. A certain way because it just doesn't like being restarted properly I don't know why so I have to hold the reset key down for a couple seconds it's time for the annual tune-up on these we're gonna be taking them all apart doing our inspections why why not make sure your circuits are fine and you don't have any weird blown out replacement caps things happen you're not in here you can't just let them sit anymore you have to 
always take their clothes off and just, you know, rub them lightly. Here we go. Let's see what's going on. It might screw up my resolution. I am in a promoted mode in multi scans. I don't know how this is going to work. We're going to see. We'll give it a second. There we go. Coming back up. Uh, okay, I'm going to start. Three, two, one. So another, that's two for two. No problems. Flawless upgrade. I did take my picture off of the back here just to save a little bit on the speed. I could put it back at any time. Uh, normally I had the tree of 24-bit PNG stuff, but that's fine. Everything's cool. I'm going to check out this uh, about. Okay. I'm also going to check out the HD toolbox thing like I always do. doesn't say anything about a new SCSI dot device, but I'm going to check it. Or L fast file system. Huh. Sandus 4 gig. Alright. Uh, the H1, the H2. Alright, we're just going to go advanced. 50 buffers. Yeah, 40.1. We're going to add a new file system. L47.4. That's what I have. So there's been no change from 3.2's 47.4 fast file system. You're okay there. Everything is great. But I do want to do the show config GUI just to verify that that is working. Oh yeah. Much better. Now we have tabs for everything. Look at that. The devices, all the ports, the versions, how many times it's open. Timer is really busy there. But it's nice to... Uh, have that functioning. So that is OS 3.2 on the 3 and the 4000. I can continue on, but you get the gist of it. Should you upgrade? You should upgrade immediately if you're a 3.2 user. This fixes a lot of your crazy issues you've been having. Do you need to burn a ROM? Preferably if you have that crazy boot screen. Other than that, you're good to go with the modules. Thanks for watching, and as always, I hope this helps you. I hope you learned something.